Jewish leaders from around the globe have condemned the pamphlets, among them New York Congressman Jerry Nadler. He issued this statement, quote, if this attack is being used for political purposes, that is a particularly manipulative and callous act in a country where the Jewish community has already been subject to a rise in anti-Semitism. Congressman Nadler joins me right now on set. Thank you, sir, for joining. So tell me, one of the big reactions to this is, of course, that this is an echo of history, that this part of the world was occupied by Nazi Germany during World War II. Do you think this is a deliberate effort to exploit that piece of history? Well, clearly it is, because there's a, a reference in the leaflet that it says that um, we're doing this, uh, we're taking these steps to the reference to requiring the Jews to register, and because leaders of the Jewish community supported the Bandera uh, uh, Junta or something, uh, which is the pro-Russian separatist reference to the Kiev government. Now, Stepan Bandera was a Ukrainian nationalist who, led, who fought with the Nazis against the Soviets in World War II and participated in mass murders of Jews. So this is a deliberate uh, reminder of Ukrainian mass murder of Jews uh, aiding the Nazis and in effect warning that if they don't uh, behave, if they don't register, uh, they're, they're, they're risking the similar things. And of course, asking Jews to register and, say, and, and pay a fee, a special tax on the Jewish community, uh, every time that's been done historically before, it was a prelude to, to murder. Uh, of one sort or another. It brings back a lot of painful history, and we did hear accounts of people bursting into tears upon receiving these pamphlets, very dramatic stories from the ground. W what do you think is behind this? Do you think this is an effort, as the pro-Russian protesters claim, to maybe discredit them? Well, it's an effort by somebody to discredit somebody. It's not clear who. Uh, it was signed, allegedly, by the, uh, someone named Pushilin, who's the head of the local pro-Soviet uh, separatists. He denies having anything to do with it. Uh, whether uh, the, 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 which side put this out, we don't know, but it's a despicable attempt to use the Jews, again, as a pawn in a, and to use anti-Semitism and the fear of anti-Semitism uh, in, in a land steeped in it and in its, and in its history uh, to use that as a pawn in the struggles between these two groups. And of course, it's yet another division in a country that can't really tolerate any more divisions right now that seems on the cusp the, of falling apart. And it also shows that anti-Semitism is strong enough so that one or the other side fear, feels that it is useful uh, to exploit. Well, that is always a troubling thing to hear. With so many fault lines in Ukraine, do you think this new deal has any chance of withstanding that? I don't know. I'm not going to venture a guess as to whether the deal does. It, the, the, the initial signs are not very good, but whether the Russians can or want to pressure the pro-Soviet, the pro-Soviet, the pro-Russian uh, separatists to adhere to the deal, uh, contrary to the initial leanings, remains to be seen. And do you think this administration and President Obama have done enough on Ukraine and the crisis there? I think they've done what they can. I mean, you have to realize, I, it, it always bothers me to read uh, people and uh, tough guys saying we should, we, you know, the, the president's weak, et cetera, unless you're willing to go to war or to threaten credibly to send in troops, you don't have that, many le that much leverage. And I don't think we're willing to do that, nor should we be. So within the limits of, what, of the capabilities of the United States, I think we're doing about what can be done. All right. Well, a voice of caution there. Thank you so much. And thank you for taking a stand on the discrimination issue here.